I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. Our very special guest for this segment is Council Member Robert Jackson, who is the Chair of the Education Committee. Councilman, welcome to Reaching Out. Well, thank you. Uh, I appreciate you uh, affording me the opportunity to be here. But besides education, as you know, I co-chair the New York City Council's Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, and there are 27 members of the caucus. So I, I have uh, several responsibilities as a current member of the City Council of New York, um, and uh, I just have two more years in my tenure, and I look forward to you know, spending every day just doing the best that I can to represent the people of uh, northern Manhattan. Well, my math says that's over 50 percent of the council members. Well, yeah, it's about, yes, yes, you're, I think you're right about that. It's a little bit more than 50, probably 31 will be termed out uh, in uh, December of 2013, um, and you have new blood coming in. Well, that's going to be an exciting time. It's always an exciting time when you uh, have new members coming in, and obviously uh, you have fresh ideas, and uh, even some of the ideas are old ideas, but uh, they come with new energy. And I think that the people of New York City uh, want to see some energetic, uh, energetic uh, processes coming up here in the future. Now, before we begin, uh, let's tell everybody about your uh, your vast career that you had in labor, <laughs> just just so that we uh, get a background of the the councilman Robert Jackson, who is uh, sitting before us today. Well, as you know. Um, uh, I started my career uh, as an activist in high school and subsequently in college I went to SUNY New Paltz and, and president of the Black Student Union there and uh, uh, then uh, I, uh, I left college and went to go work for the state of New York. Uh, I investigated fraud for about five years for the State Department of Labor and then went to go work for a labor union. The New York State Public Employees Federation currently represents about 55,000 professional, scientific, and technical employees who work for the state of New York. So I started as a field representative for about 10 years, and then about a year I was up at headquarters in Albany as a statewide labor management coordinator, and then subsequently as a director of field services for New York and Long Island, representing about 18,000 uh, members uh, and about mm, about maybe 9, 10 staff members, or maybe 10 or 12. I don't really count. So I spent 22 years in a labor union, and uh, even as a staff member, I was a vice president of the professional staff of, uh, of the staff union and helped negotiate one of its agreements with the uh, management of the union, PEF. Now, what, what do you think when you heard about the attacks on labor, how all of a sudden public, especially public sector workers, became the enemy uh, of this whole economic crisis? Damn shame. And in fact, I say damn shame because if you really look at it, they are, they are attacking themselves. And when I say themselves, because the, most of the people that are attacking labor, most of the people that are tapping, tap, uh, attacking government employees are basically working people themselves. But they're getting the message from those individuals that are part of the 1% those individuals that uh, think that they're running our country and trying to communicate loud and clear to them that is the right thing to attack uh, public employees and to attack unions. And when you really look at unions from a historical perspective, unions built this country on their backs, and labor did. And in fact, that's why uh, this country is the greatest country in the world because of its labor unions working hard in order to build the infrastructure. And, and when you look at government employees uh, going back to the 60s and 70s, that's when uh, government employees started to grow uh, more and more and become more unionized. And obviously, as you know, you have the Taylor Law, which went into effect, uh, and that brought about government employees negotiating uh, for its employees uh, with the provisos that government employees cannot strike. Right. Uh, so obviously when it comes to public employees, those groups and organizations or those individuals or those executives that want to try to take away benefits uh, that uh, uh, many employees fought and struggled for and gave up uh, uh, different aspects of their of their uh, either hourly wage or some other gives back in order to get uh, things in their contracts to try to take those away. 
by you know eliminating it in a law or saying that we don't have any money as a result of that. Now we're going to eliminate all of your rights. Totally, totally shameful, disgraceful, unacceptable, and we will fight them tooth and nail. Well, thank you for I your think passion. That's loud and clear. That's that's loud because and clear. If we look at my yes. history, uh, I worked as I said for a labor union, so I know what it is. Uh, uh, in order to fight. Um, I know what it is to be laid off because when I was a state employee, I was laid off and I was in the middle of a jury trial. And I told the judge after three weeks, sir, I'm sorry, I have to leave. I have to support my family. And as you know, most people uh, that are government employees, they don't earn a whole lot of money. No, they don't. Uh, and earning just wait, enough. Wait, 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 wait. But don't they get the pensions of $100,000? Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, I'm, hey, I'm laughing. Yeah, yes. Of course, you're joking. I mean, yes. that's only those in the highest levels of management that are getting pensions of that level. But most government employees uh, are getting a pension after 20, 25 years or 30 years of working with that in Social Security will be able basically to live in a normal environment, basically. Uh, but obviously, they don't earn a whole lot of money. Because if you look at uh, uh, the average employee, average city employee earns, uh, average city employee maybe forty, forty-five thousand dollars. Some earn fifty, some earns more than that. But the average, they don't earn that much, and so they're struggling to survive, especially in this econ hard economic times. I mean, the city of New York just laid off uh, about seven hundred employees at the Department of Education, and we held a hearing on that, yes. and a majority of the employees. Huh? Yes. Were people of color. That's right. The majority yeah. of them were women. The majority of them earned between fourteen and twenty-eight thousand dollars a year. Gross. Yes. Gross, mind you, not net. And at a hearing, I asked uh, uh, several of them that came up to testify. So, how many of you now are going to depend on the city of New York in order to survive, to pay your rent, to for health insurance, for daycare? Out of five people that were testifying, four of them raised their hand. So now they're going on a different payroll on New York City. Well, the city is going to have to pay one way or the other. Right. And so in my opinion, it was a it, it was something that should not have occurred. The layoff should not have occurred. Uh, and that if you ask the labor union, if you ask the Department of Education, how much would it have cost to save those jobs? Uh, the labor union, uh, D.C. 37 of local 372, uh, said about $25 million. The Department of Education says $35 million. Uh, Dominic Recchia, the chair of the Finance Committee, said if they would have come to us and said that they needed more money to save these jobs, we may have done that uh, when we were doing the budget in June of, of this past year. So the bottom line is, though, that we need leaders like you yes. in order to hold the fight as far as labor union. It's one thing as far as uh, legislators. As you heard the, the saying, United we stand, divided, divided we, fall. we fall. That's right. And we must stand united, especially now. Now, speaking of that, I've heard, you know, we have the Occupy Wall Street, the Occupy Movement, and people are going by now telling, the, telling them to take a bath, telling them to get a shower and get a job. <laughs> a lot of those people at uh, Occupied Wall Street are people like you and I. I go down there. There are people who go to work every day and then go on the picket line. Mm -hmm. And one thing they've made clear, they've identified the problem. They separated 1% from 99. Before that, it was public employees and unions are the problem. Now everybody understands, hey, wait, we're all in the same boat. It's 1% that has been greedy, and all they want is more, more, more. And where are they coming to get it from? The middle class that's vastly shrinking. Well, I don't. let me just say this to you as far as People indicating they should take a bath. You know, if you're out and haven't taken a bath in five days, you're going to smell, especially when you're sleeping in sleeping bags. And I say that to you, uh, uh, Greg, is because uh, this past January, uh, I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro Ooh. in Tanzania, East Africa, the highest mountain in all of Africa. And I did not take a bath for six days. It probably took you six days to get up there. <laughs> of course. And there's no showers up in the mountains. So I, did, I, I washed, but I didn't take a bath. And I probably was smelling after five days, but anyone would. Here's the bottom line, is that when you are fighting for a cause, That's trying right. to achieve a goal, if it means not taking a bath for a week or 10 days, it's okay. And that's and what I, it means. And that's yes. what it means. And I say that because 
even as you know, I you said I chaired the education committee. Yes. Um, and as a parent, as a community school school board member back in the nineties, we filed a lawsuit against the state of New York uh, in May of nineteen ninety three because we felt the state was not providing enough money to provide our children the opportunity. Don't guarantee them an education. Just give them the opportunity. And we fought and we won. And it took 13 years of litigation to win $16 billion for our children. But part of that uh, litigation, I walked from New York to Albany, 150 miles. And on, it took eight days. And on the seventh day of the walk, Samira Ahmed said to me, our deputy director for the Campaign for Fiscal Equity, yes. the group that filed the lawsuit, Robert, we're going to be in court tomorrow on the eighth day. So I want you to put on a suit and look your best. And I said to her, Samira, I didn't bring a suit. I want to go in there smelling as funky as I can be <laughs> so the judges will be able to smell me in the back of the room. And I'm just saying that yeah. when you're on a mission yes. to fulfill a goal and objective, whatever it takes to get it done, that's mm -hmm. what you have to do. That's all the time we have for this segment. I'm Gregory Floyd. Our special guest was Councilman Robert Jackson, city council member. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.